Hey guys, it's me, Dr. Samina Ramon, Gyno Girl. So menopause and perimenopause are having a big moment right now. I mean, everyone is talking about it. There's Oprah, there's uh, New York Times. We're going to get into everything that, that's been said about it. And quite frankly, as it's been said, if you live long enough and you have ovaries, you can't outrun or outfax the big M, as Oprah said. So um, I want to talk about some mistakes we make clinically when just talking to patients about menopause. I want to talk about uh, some mistakes I've made clinically, and I want to talk about how we can rebrand it for, for our patients, for ourselves, and to empower our patients to live their best life. So let's get at it. Okay guys, so I'm Dr. Smeena Ron, Gyno Girl. For those of you new to my channel, I'm a board certified gynecologist in downtown Chicago. I've been in solo private practice since 2014. I'm a clinical assistant professor at Northwestern Medicine, uh, University, the Feinberg School of Medicine. And my expertise is in female sexual medicine. So I am a fellow for the International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health. I'm on multiple um, committees for ISHWISH, including the Educational Committee and the Scientific Committee, certified menopause doctor through the North American Menopause Society. I have been since 2016. So I'm really excited today to talk about this topic of rebranding menopause. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel because that would be awesome because I'm going to continue to put out good information for you. But what I wanted to talk about is the great, awesome rebranding that's happening for menopause right now. Okay, so Oprah Daily, God, when Oprah gets involved, yes, you know, like Oprah Daily just came out with um, a series on menopause and she had a big discussion. Happy to say that one of my friends and colleagues, Heather Hirsch, Dr. Heather Hirsch, who is an amazing menopause expert, was on the panel. So kudos to you, Heather, as well as Dr. Sharon Malone. I don't know personally, but I know that she is a big advocate for uh, menopause um, management and um, for patients going through perimenopause and menopause. But also there was Drew Barrymore, Maria Shriver, Gail King. It was an amazing discussion. Everyone was talking about how they were mismanaging menopause, things that clinicians did wrong, things that they didn't realize, things that they didn't recognize, how they felt dead, you know, all of this stuff. As many of you have probably heard from my other discussions, there is definitely a dearth of information and knowledge through medical school and residency for individuals, clinicians that are getting trained that should ultimately know how to treat perimenopausal and menopausal symptoms. We can't continue the implicit bias and continue to tell patients that they're going crazy or to suck it up buttercup. Okay, we're not this is not the society that we live in anymore. And I'm so, so happy that there's so much advocacy going on for menopause right now and perimenopause. When Oprah gets involved, the world will listen, I'm sure. Many of us have been screaming from our um, the rooftops for many years now. Maybe not on social media. I've been giving talks about menopause since probably about 2015, when, about a year after I started my practice. And I would go to different clinical settings uh, to talk to different clinicians about perimenopause and menopause and, you know, how I we should be treating it. I would talk to cancer survivors about perimenopause and menopause. I would talk to professional women's networks. You know, on my own level, I've been trying to do it for a while, but I will say that as clinicians, we get it wrong a lot too. And this was certainly demonstrated by some of the discussions that were had on this amazing panel. But I also have to say that we're trying to do a better job. Different companies are popping up. The New York Times got involved. I think I did a segment on, on this on, on my um, Instagram reels that women are getting misled during menopause. And you know, that a great discussion uh, in this article as well. I had tons of patients come to my office after that, like, yes, I want to get treated for these symptoms. Please tell me you're going to treat me. Please tell me I'm not going crazy. Please tell me I can do something about this weight gain. Please tell me that sex shouldn't hurt. Like all of these patients were coming in and they all, and I see them daily. And this is a discussion we have. I always listen to my patients and that's what I recommend for all the clinicians. Please listen. You know, please try to put aside implicit bias of what you think this person should be experiencing. Please don't tell patients this is in their head. Please don't give them a bleak outlook about perimenopause and menopause. Like this should not happen. Okay, we are in 2023. Yes, the Women's Health Initiative screwed it up for many years, over two decades. And I'll do a separate talk about the Women's Health Initiative, which was the study in, I think it was the early 2000s, that sort of changed the way that patients were getting treated. Everyone went off hormone therapy. People were dying, premature deaths. I'm going to talk about that separately. But what I would say is, you know, we are in 2023. We should not be giving patients 
you know, a bleak look about what's happening to them and we should be empowering them and patients should feel empowered. Okay. And I'm so glad there's so many companies that are jumping out there to get involved. My Alloy, Midi, Odella Health, these are sort of um, digital platforms that have established themselves to help patients in these areas. So that's amazing. For some of us, we've been trying to do this for a while um, locally. Like I said, I've been giving talks since at least 2015 on this topic. And I will say like as a clinician, I also got it wrong, you know, presenting it at times too. I feel bad to admit this, but I was in my, you know, probably in my 30s at the time and I hadn't had my last kid even yet. And I give this as an example now when I give talks too, because I want to show how I've sort of myself rebranded how I talk about menopause. By the beginning of my talk, you know, Game of Thrones was huge back then, um, Eddard Stark and Winter is Coming and all of that stuff. It was like these memes that were going around. And I've always started my talk with this meme, brace yourself, menopause is coming. And it's this meme of a very like, you know, winter is coming, death is coming, let's throw you out to the pasture kind of meme that I didn't realize that, you know, starting to talk about, you know, general urinary syndrome and menopause with this kind of meme is very detrimental, actually. And I really feel bad about it. I like to use an example now that like, you know, now that I've started to experience symptoms of perimenopause, the brain fog, and, you know, sometimes vaginal giants, whatever the case may be, we should not be telling patients this. I mean, we can do it as a joke to say, no, this is not how we're going to discuss menopause anymore. You have a lot of life to live, and you can live it vivaciously. And you don't have to feel like you're being thrown out to the pasture just because your reproductive years are over. This should empower you now. Like, let's get excited, okay? Like, I don't have to worry about getting pregnant anymore. Let's get excited about it, you know? Let's get excited about, I've lived through so many years, I can really feel more empowered. I've gone through a lot of crap in my life and now I can feel empowered. I mean, this is the message I try to give patients now. I love that everyone's up and talking about it and patients are coming to me and they're excited and they're like, can you help me with this? Are you gonna prescribe me estrogen? Please tell me yes. And of course, you know, we have the discussion, what's right for them, what's not right for them, what their symptoms are. But yes, I mean, I do believe that patients should get vaginal estrogen when they're going into genital urinary syndrome and menopause. Because as I've said in my other video, UTIs kill old patients all the time. Okay. I can tell you from experience, patients die from UTIs because of urosepsis when you're older, sometimes when you're younger, but usually when you're when you're when you're older and your system can't handle it and you go into your sepsis and it causes you to have delirium and all of this stuff. And this is something that absolutely should be given to, you know, every patient. I think my friend Dr. Rachel Rubin says it like everybody should get this prescription for vaginal estrogen. And then have a discussion around patients' histories and patients, you know, medical problems. Listen, clinicians, listen to your patients. Please do not put that implicit bias on them. Oh, you know, this is a brown lady, like she probably can suck it up or another female complaining of pain. Oh my God, you know, implicit bias is real, okay? This is a real thing. Patients experience it all the time and we need to do better. We need to listen to our patients. We need to listen to our patients. Let me say that again. I think that's one of the big messages I wanna to say to the clinicians listening. Now to the patients, we need to work hard to find someone that will listen to you because there's going to be a lot of people that don't. Sometimes it's because they don't know how to treat the symptoms. Sometimes it's because their practice is, they have to see 40 patients a day and they, you know, they can't sit and have an hour discussion about your symptoms with you. And sometimes it's because, yeah, maybe they're just not that nice. I don't know. Like there's a lot of factors involved and a lot of stressors that happen for, for clinicians that are trying to treat these symptoms and it's not always easy black and white. So we have to empower ourselves as well to either demand to be listened to by the person that you're seeing or find someone new to see through menopause.org. You'll find um, many certified menopause clinicians. But I'm very excited about the moment menopause is having. I, Like I said, I just admit to sometimes giving in my early parts of my private practice, giving the wrong message about menopause. But my intention was good to really sort of empower patients to understand how to treat genital urinary syndrome and menopause or how to treat your systemic symptoms, who are the right candidates for hormone therapy, avoiding different types of snake oil, that kind of stuff. I just wanted to take a moment and say I'm so excited to be part of this discussion, to continue this discussion, to really say there are ways that you can really enjoy your midlife, and you should enjoy your midlife. 
you've been through a lot, you know, whether you have kids or you don't have kids, whether you're, you're taking care of parents or you don't take care of parents, whether you're a career patient or you're not a career patient, whether you're a stay at home mom or you're not a stay at home, we as ovary owners tend to balance way too much on our plate. And in your midlife, it really sucks because you can have 50 things on your plate at once. And so we still have to still take care of us. And that's my point here too. It's like you can still thrive and live an amazing life. If you're the right candidate for systemic hormone therapy, find someone that'll listen to you about it. Most patients are good candidates for vaginal therapy. So let's treat them with this. Okay, that's my message. I'm excited that menopause is getting uh, a lot of attention and perimenopause is getting a lot of attention. I'm excited that everyone's in on this discussion now. I'm excited that there are many platforms available for patients. And I just want to say there's there's help for you. There's hope for you. And there's a great quality of life that's waiting for you. So please, 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 if you're a clinician, listen to your patient. Study about perimenopause and menopause if you don't have any idea or send your patient to somebody that does from the North American Menopause Society who is certified and who has a passion about helping these patients. If you're a patient, please find someone that can listen to you or demand to be listened to. You know, we have to use the tools that we have, understand our body. I have patients who have done the research. They come to me and they're very savvy. They've done all their articles. They've done the research. They know what they want. We have a discussion. I have other patients who this is news to them. They thought, hey, I didn't think that, you know, estrogen was safe or the black box warnings are all they see. If you're in any of those categories, there's definitely someone out there that can help you. If there's not anyone in your area, there's digital platforms now for that as well. So please, please, please get on the on the wave here and uh, let's continue to destigmatize perimenopause and menopause and let's continue to do better for our patients. Thanks. See you next time, guys. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.